Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 12. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. Alright, so we're now going to take part in the free breathing challenge. Basically, this is for any car that's naturally aspirated. Uh, starting off with Road Atlanta, Laguna Seca, and Sakuba Circuit. And we're taking the DB9 Coupe. Alrighty, yo, we're taking a European car around an American track. Let's go. Aston Martin DB9. Oh, they didn't even custom program this to have a backwards dial like the actual car does. How gutting. And that is why you put extra tires on. Oh, I've spun it, lads. Oh, no, I've lost my rear window. How have I managed? All right. Charming. This is now a uh, back of the pack. Trying to catch up to the leader situation here. It's a body shock. Electricity. Energy. Between you and me. It's a body shock. Electricity. Energy. Between you and me. It's a body shock. Electricity. What are you doing? Get out of the way. My Aston Martin is so smashed up and I'm so gutted that it's been destroyed like this. Genuinely don't know. I lost control as part of this section and apparently I got crashed into and everything got absolutely smashed up but luckily speaking with this game everything like when it comes to engine suspension well engine is a question mark when it comes to suspension brakes and all that stuff they're really easy to damage engine is easy to damage halfway and then the other half is really difficult to damage but steering and all that stuff is just impossible to damage in this game to the point that hmm, I'm pretty much cruising along and I that will have no problem until I have a, another small collision. Feel it. I love it. Energy. Fair enough, Epic. Thank you so much for sticking around, though. Mew, 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 mew. Right, we got three more laps to go. Not gonna lie, that's a pretty cool Metallica song. 
That username it was brilliant. Welcome, new people. Welcome. How's everyone doing today? Actually, do you know what? We're going to put some Metallica after this. Oh, that was so lucky. How I got away with that? Well, I got no clue. Not bad. Final lap coming up. Woohoo! And turn light and turn night. Take my hand off to never, never land. I don't, I think that's the lyrics. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've listened to that song. Yahoo! Yeah, I took that corner way too early. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. I'm doing it. And I'm going to take my rewards. Uh, we should be level one. All right, here we go. I love the sound of the engines in this game. I'm trying to think. So, Motorsport 3 had 8 cars. Didn't... I think Motorsport 4 was the one where they added more and made it up to 16 car grids. <laughs> Do that and you get jabated twice. <laughs> you got jabated. You got... You got jabated. You got jabated. Jacob, it's been confirmed it's coming out this year. I don't know why you keep saying I hope it comes out this year. It's been confirmed. It is going to come out this year. But they normally announce it in July, maybe even August time. Because they always announce it within three months of the game actually coming out. That's what they've done on every single Need for Speed. We're not going to hear anything until August, maybe September time about the new Need for Speed. Well, I don't fucking know, do I? <laughs> I'm not in EA. It's just EA always has patterns. They always do the same thing every single year. They always announce the game three months before it comes out. They always announce... Uh, they always release the game in November. Which, again, they've confirmed that it's coming out this year in... the f uh, Well, in um, financial year Q3. Which is uh, financial year Q3 is uh, October to December, I believe. And then Q4 is um, January to March. And then the financial year begins in April. So Q3 
needs to be paid back is crap. Eh, personal opinion. I think me and a lot of people think it's one of the better games in the franchise, but it only took us to have Need for Speed Heat to realize it was a much better game than it we made it out to be. Because once Heat came out, Heat was such a disappointment, and it was so much worse than 2017. Like, granted, visually it was better. Gameplay-wise, it was better. Maybe handling physics were worse. Customization was better. But overall, because of the fact there was no content whatsoever in the game, meant within a couple of hours you would finish the game, and it was like, oh, well, there's nothing else to do other than do race over race over race. Yeah, but how long did it take you to do Need for Speed Heat? Because I know for a fact, Jacob, you were only playing Need for Speed Heat for about two weeks and then you were done with it. Which is extremely short for a racing game. Shit. Oh, you've tapped the wall there. Oh, no wonder it wasn't actually playing songs that I wanted to listen to. It's been shuffling this entire time. Well, as much as you wish the game's going to be late, it's EA. They're going to release the game whether we like it or not. And they're going to release it in November because EA rushes their games. So by the time... Um, November comes around, we will have another Need for Speed game. We will have Need for Speed 2022. And it's either going to be amazing or shit. Or somewhere in between. My hopes are extremely low for it. So, I'm going to buy it just because it's Need for Speed. And because I'll need content to do on stream. Chances of me enjoying it and playing it for long? Very slim. Unless they can actually make it good like Need for Speed 2022. Uh, not 2022. If they can make it good like uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, like 2010. Maybe most wanted 2012. Just the excitement that those games offered. But again, chances are very slim. But again, it's been done by Criterion now. Rather than uh, Ghost Games. And it's also got... Um, being co-helped by, co-helped by uh, Codies, Codemasters. So that's also a bonus. There we go. Level one for Aston Martin. Here we go, Sakuba. Woo! But yeah, Co Codemasters is good at graphics. They're really good at graphics um, and optimizing their games. Again, the only thing I'm concerned about is Codemasters have their own engine. They run off of the Ego engine. Um, and I'm hoping that none of the F1 games, the Dirt games, or anything like that is going to be forced onto Frostbite. Because Newsflash EA, 
your frostbite engine is shit. End of discussion. It is so poorly optimized and so rubbish when it comes to making video games. That's why all of the Need for Speed games look crap. And in all honesty, I think the new Need for Speeds need to move to the Ego engine. Because, sure, Frostbite is good for, like, FIFA and those kind of games that are much smaller based. The sport games. It works really well for them. But for it, to force Frostbite onto Need for Speed is the wrong move. Especially as they now own the Ego engine as well. I think EA needs to get their head out of their ass and make sure that the new Need for Speed is made on the Ego engine. Because if it's made on Frostbite, we may as well just not bother. And I will be researching whether the new Need for Speed is on Frostbite or Ego. Because if it's on Ego, we, it actually might be a really good game. <sighs> Unreal Engine is great for like first-person shooters, third-person action games, pretty much anything. But racing games, it just doesn't cut it. it. It doesn't work. No racing game that's ever been done on Unreal Engine has ever been like, oh my god, this feels amazing. Racing games are its own genre, though. Like, you can get away with action games on other engines. Unreal Engine. Some simulators can get away on Unreal Engine. But... When it comes to racing games, they're a completely different breed of video game. And especially as a racing game fan, any game that I've racing game that I've ever played that's run off of Unity, been shit. It's pretty much been fairly shit. Any racing game I've played off of Unreal Engine has been mediocre. Oh yeah. I I I sort of gathered it would have been a joke, but I couldn't tell, so I still had to explain. <laughs> but yeah, it's just horrendous. I do, um, I think it is down to what engine they're using. Because Frostbite has, the, the thing is, you look at, I, d I honestly have no clue what the older Need for Speed games were running on, what engines they were running on, but they were not running on Frostbite. I think the earliest Frostbite game was Need for Speed Rivals, if I'm not mistaken. I don't even think Need for Speed 2012 was running on Frostbite. And you look, all of the Need for Speed games since Frostbite was introduced into it have all done f meh, not well. I genuinely think the problem is Frostbite, not Ghost Games or anything like that. I understand Frostbite is like EA's intellectual property. They pretty much make Battlefield on Frostbite. They make everything on Frostbite. Even, I think Mirror's Edge Catalyst was on Frostbite as well. The newer Mirror's Edge. The amount of times I said Frostbite is unreal. But yeah, it's, it's not a great engine. For racing games. For other stuff, like Mirror's Edge, it is a phenomenal engine, to be honest. But... Yeah, uh, Need for Speed 2012 was a copy and paste of Burnout Paradise, but I think it was good because of that. I think because a lot of people were too focused on, oh, it's not of Need for Speed, but actually, if you think of it as Burnout Paradise with real cars... Need for Speed 2012 actually becomes quite an enjoyable game. And I really enjoyed it. I think it's just the menta mentality that people have towards that game. 
that makes it why people hate it. Because I've seen people who say, oh, I hate Need for Speed 2012. And I'm like, but it's just Burnout Paradise and you love Burnout Paradise. And they just freeze and they're like, oh, but... You Wait, what? You're right. And then they go and play it and... They still hate it because they're in that mentality. But, like, they can't deny what I said is true. Because it is true. There's a fucking fly in my face again. Do you know my problem? I don't have a problem with a Mustang Marquee. I have a problem with its name. The car itself, sure, it's, it's a solid car. The problem is, it doesn't look like a fucking Mustang. Hell, if they made a Mustang bodied car that was electric and called that the Marquee, I wouldn't even care because it's still a Mustang body. But the bod. There's no. nothing that links it to the Mustang name. Anyways, we've got all our stuff done and we've got a new car. Let's hope it's not a marquee. Mustang. And then we've got a 2003 Honda Mugen S2000. Many thing. Don't tell if this is true or dream. Not bad. Alright, so after ranting for about 10 minutes about how Nissan ruined the skyline... By making that skyline after the R34 that basically was just shit. Um, we're taking that for this Nissan Racing Club. I have no clue why. Just felt like it. Uh, this is the Nissan Speedway? What? Okay, New York Circuit and then Tsukuba Circuit. I did not realize there was a Nissan Speedway, but I feel like this is just Sunset Peninsula. We'll find out in a second. All right, here we go. I... I really don't know. Okay, this thing's got... Pull. Holy crap. Oh, it's got a good sounding engine, and we're getting close to 180 miles an hour. Uh, by the looks of it, yeah, it's Sunset Peninsula. It, it, it all looks like Sunset Peninsula. This is this such a weird... Why would they call it the Nissan Speedway? Why not just call it Sunset Peninsula Speedway? Oh, no! Balls! I'm still in the lead. How? What's damage? What's damage? Brakes are damaged. No, no, Sylvia, you're staying back. Have I managed to understeer into a corner and still survive that? No, 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 no. The fact that the damage in this game allows you to crash the car like that and still does not and the bumper comes off and it still looks fairly damaged. Forza now doesn't let you do that. Oh no, you can only have the spoiler fall off. Anything else is too too much damage. We'll get a copyright lawsuit shit. We'll get in big trouble. Yeah, right. Big trouble, my ass. How many? Who wants to bet that I'm going to call this Sunset Peninsula in uh, Speedway when it comes to actually doing the chapters on the video? I fucked it twice. How? 
now is the question. Bananam, 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 bam 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 bam. I can remember anything Can't tell if this is true or dream Oh! Well that was a big bang Posting time to scoreboards Yes, because the servers are totally still running Not bad, 3.30 for that Everything's quick though Maybe I didn't make a bad choice Alright, let's get going Wow, wow, wow. Rum, 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 but we are gaining so much time on the straights. 250 kilometers an hour. That's 150... 55 miles an hour. See, the only sad part um, is when it comes to Motorsport 7, everything in that game is homologated. Which means that every car you take is upgraded, so they'll never be stock. Um, but also, they're upgraded to a point where you're allowed them. You're not allowed to upgrade beyond that to take part in the events. Which I understand for some of the events. I think some of the older Forza games did it as well, where you couldn't take it if it was too high. But you weren't given the choice of your upgrades in Motorsport 7. I think... Uh, I think they did the same thing in... Um, Motorsport... No, Motorsport 6, you could take what you wanted. Yeah, so it was just Motorsport 7 that did it. I'm really hoping they remove it in Motorsport 8. Because if it's still in Motorsport 8, they're going to ruin that game as well. <laughs> Honestly, Turn 10 has so many opportunities. Especially having had Motorsport 8 in development for 5 years now. Oh, shit. They will have had plenty of time. Because remember, the game has been in development for five years. It's not like, oh, well, they were doing work on Motorsport 7 for a year before they started on the next game. No, they didn't. They didn't add any content other than new cars. But new cars, they start doing as they're working on cars for the next game. So, you know, that's not how it works. Mm. They've had plenty of time to work on it, so if they haven't and it will show, it will prove that Forza just isn't wanting to put effort into their game anymore. Which would be a massive shame to see, because obviously it's been such a good franchise. I mean, we, we had evidence of this, that game developers are getting bored of actually developing their games with Gran Turismo 7. 
there was a lot of stuff missing from Gran Turismo 7 that could have been added into the game. Like, the game wasn't enough for a game that had been deve in development for eight years. I'm going to be 100% honest. They did not put enough in Gran Turismo 7. But, they could have gotten away with it if they gave us regular updates. Every two weeks, they added a new car. Maybe two new cars. Which, sure, they've been doing it three cars every month. But a month is a long time to wait for three cars when they could have just given us one car every two weeks and had something new more frequently. And along with every one of those, bringing out new events, new championships, new menus, and new tracks. Maybe once every three months. So far, we haven't had a new track yet. Which, bearing in mind, this coming up is going to be the... I think the fourth content update? No. Yes. Because you had the Subarus, then you had the other ones with the funny car... No, so this will be the, yeah. So this will be the June update that has will be the third batch of content. So if they don't do a track now, then that means they would have gone nearly four months without adding a track to the game. That would just tell everyone that they've just given up on the game. Ah, not bad. Level one. Woohoo! Right. Let's carry on. Sakuba. So yeah. Continuing on from the last clip. Um, Gran Turismo 7 was good from day one. Um, other than the time when it went down for like 18 hours. That was a bit shit. But um, Gran Turismo 7 had content. The only problem was that that content was behind a difficulty barrier. Like, there's physically no way I'm doing the one-hour endurance races, sitting an hour through them, when the difficulty is four chilies, right? And bearing in mind, I struggle with anything that's got one chili at the moment because of how much more challenging they've set them up. Like, I've done races against the hardest AI, and they're easier than some of the one chili events in Gran Turismo. Some of them are ridiculous how they've scaled the difficulty. And the fact that they force that difficulty on you is a really shitty thing to do. Like, mission races, sure, I understand there are trophies. But they should be trophies based on your skill. Like, by all means, if, if you want to say, oh, I've done... All the gold trophies on the hardest difficulty. You can do that. I just want to be able to say. I've done the gold tr trophies. I've done them on an easier difficulty. Because that's what I'm capable of. But I've completed those events. And I feel satisfied with that. That's all that matters when with gaming. As long as I'm satisfied with what I have done in that game. That's why these. these I don't do this. Falls a multiple playthrough on expert. I do it on medium. Except for the first one, which I did medium for the ha first half and then had to put it down to easy because for some reason the AI was completely broken in Motorsport 1. But like, as long as I'm satisfied that I've completed a game, like Motorsport 1, I feel satisfied I've completed it. I've 100 percent it. I've got all the first place trophies now. I did have to go back to it for a couple of hours, but I've got all the gold trophies in the game, so yeah, that's complete in my mind, and I don't care what anyone says. That's my definition of completed, and I think it's completed, so I'm satisfied with that. Once I go through all of these and I get gold in all of these, I'll be satisfied. I will say they're completed. I will enjoy it. But for a game developer to force you to do something on a certain difficulty and not give you the option to make it easier on you so that you can say that you've completed it is a really crappy thing. Especially when they make their challenges 
when you go back to Gran Turismo Sports Nurburgring race for the circuit experience, that was all right. I could do that. But then you go to the Gran Turismo 7 Nurburgring race and they take off 30 seconds off of it. Which is like the difference between a casual racer who's able to complete it and a professional who's been doing racing games all their life and been getting training and all that shit. Like, it's ridiculous. I think the only person I've watched that's actually golden Nurburgring, I think it's uh, Super GT. It's such a ridiculous mission, and I hate it with a passion. And the fact that Polyphony won't add, they add a difficulty option to make all the other events easier. The, the events that give you the most money, but when it comes to getting the gold trophies and being able to say, I've got the trophies, like, in terms of money and credits, those give you nothing. So at least let me make the difficulty easier and actually do it, you know? Is a ridiculously stupid method that they've done. That's why I enjoy Forza a little more when it comes to the racing stuff. Because it gives me that option. That I can race against people of my skill level. And I can practice and say, ah, I've done well. Not sit there with AI that's ridiculously difficult. Always beating me and I'm always coming in like 7th or 8th. Because that's never, never going to get me to improve. And it's never going to incentivize me. To actually drive better or actually play the game because I'm not winning the game. Like, I don't need to win all the time. I can play... If I want something that's more realistic and I don't always win, I'll play the F1 games. For something like Forza, it's all about having fun and enjoying the game. Having fun. And that option should be given to everyone. By all means, if you're someone who wants an extremely challenging game, then you select. I want to be extremely challenged. By all means, that doesn't... It still wouldn't affect you if they added a difficulty option to Gran Turismo 7. Because guess what? You could still pick the same difficulty you've been running the entire time. It's just for people who want it a bit easier or a bit harder can choose that. Accessibility for everyone. You know. Anyways. I think that's us done. For today. We got new masters. And our skyline is now level 2. Woohoo. Lovely job there. And we got a Nissan Top Secret D1 Spec F S15. And 12 grand. Woohoo. That looks lovely, actually. But... A little bit of lazy design. They've just... Flipped it? To this side? Is there a reason why they... Uh, I'm not even going to get into it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.